What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Mom Heroes and today I'm going to be giving you guys a review of the Mythic Hero banner that we're getting tomorrow. It features Naga as the Astra Mythic Hero. Finally, after so many months of existence of Aether Raids, we have finally got an Astra Mythic Hero, which a lot of people have been waiting for. And she is a blue flying dragon, so she completes the flying dragon emblem. Blue flying dragon was a class which we didn't really have. And her artwork is absolutely gorgeous, and she's got the awakening design, of course. She gives you plus 5 defense and plus 5 HP as her Astra Mythic boost. I knew this would be defense because Duma is for attack, Yuna is for speed, Air is for resistance, and Naga is for defense. And uh, she is a flying dragon, which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't really want to have any kind of armor unit or infantry unit as a mythic hero because their mobility is definitely going to be helpful in the offense. And uh, a lot of people did expect this mythic hero to be Naga because of the Learn with Sharina leak. And we did know about her Divine Fang. Her weapon is Divine Breath, which gives you plus 3 attack. It's effective on Dragon Foes, which does make sense. And it grants her in combat buff depending on number of dragon and allies who have got the effective against dragon weapons within 2 spaces of her. And this can go up to 9. So for example, if you have got 2 units uh, in 2 spaces of her who have got the Divine Naga effect, which gives them effective against dragon effect, then she can go up to plus 6. Or if you've got 3 dragons or 3 units who have got dragon effective weapons within 2 spaces of her, then this can go up to plus 9 to all of her stats. And this is gonna be an in-combat buff, so this is not gonna be able to be uh, affected by panic ploy. And she's got the adaptive damage as well. So this encounter isn't really built into her breath, which is one of the things which people have to do uh, if they want to use her uh, as a proper dragon because uh, if you replace this with Lightning Breath, it doesn't really do a lot for you. And Divine Breath is just such a good weapon because it synergizes with her Slotsy skill, it gives her more stats, it can easily be stacked on upon with something like Ward Flyers or Ward Dragons, and you can also use stuff like Kate and Marth and just those kinds of spur bots to give her a lot of stats. So she's going to be having a lot of stats. She's got Luna as her special, and even Glimmer can work in place of this, uh, because I believe that she's going to be having high attack. She has effective against uh, Dragon's effect. She gets plus 3 attack from her weapon and can get even more attack. So Glimmer can also work. And then her slot is skill is an exclusive AR skill, which I really, really dislike. I couldn't care less about these kinds of skills, but it does make sense on an Astro Mythic Hero because they are meant for Aether Raid's usage. But even then, like this skill incentivizes you to destroy the enemy structures, and uh, it's not really possible to destroy all of the enemy structures uh, in the time limit while taking out all of the opponent's units. So not really the most convenient skill, something like a Swift Sparrow, uh, those kinds of skills are going to be helping you more and are more consistent because some teams might have their structures uh, behind their units and you do not want to destroy every single structure a lot of times because it might help you block a certain unit's attack range and also the fact that uh, some structures just do not really pose as a threat to you so you don't really have to go out of your way to destroy them because they don't really do anything to you. Uh, so, I don't really like this skill a lot, a lot of people don't. Uh, I know the defensive version of this AR skill is more useful, and a I have seen a lot of people use that, but for the offense, I'm not really a big fan of that. But I guess it works on an Astro Mythic Hero. She's got Chill Speed as her slot B skill, and you can pair this up with Chill Attack on Seal Slot to neuter some of the uh, threats on the offense. But this can always be replaced with something else for slot B. Um, and uh, she's got Divine Fang as her slotsy skill, which is an exclusive skill. So at start of turn, adjacent allies receive effective against dragons. So everyone basically becomes a dragon slayer if they are near Naga, which does make sense once again, uh, because she has given weapons to mankind for slaying dragons and for keeping dragons in check. Uh, so this means that someone like Ophelia, Lina, even Reinhardt can have access to dragon effective uh, damage, which is really, really detrimental for all of these uh, buff dragons because the effective damage is going to be helping you just tear through them. And this is a big blow for the people who exclusively run uh, Dragon Emblem teams and stuff like that because 
Naga is even useful on defense in Ether Raids because she is a flyer, she can have access to something like Aerobatics, Flat Formation, Guidance, she can provide that movement utility, receive that as well, and her mobility isn't really as bad as someone like Duma uh, on defense, so Divine Fang can help some of the defense teams to just blast through these super tanks, uh, which are usually Noe, Fey, and those kinds of dragons, which a lot of people use. So Divine Fang is definitely a game changer and does lower the value of dragons as a whole in the entire game. Uh, even in something like Arena Assault, Divine Fang is going to be helping you against those kinds of Dragon Emblem teams because Halloween Mer, Legendary Tiki, all of those dragons are really, really common. So even outside of Aether Raids, you're going to be able to get something out of this. This skill is extremely strong, and I believe with uh, units like Mikaya, Hoshiden Summer Mikaya, Shida, Claire, and also uh, Kenshi Knight Hinoka, they get basically triple effectiveness because they already have dual effectiveness thanks to their weapons. And this is extremely strong and does make me really, really happy as a Mikaya user because she's going to be able to do so much. Having effectiveness against three uh, unit types is huge uh, and that's absolutely amazing and really, really busted. This also means that uh, Duma has lost a lot of his value. I mean, he's not really the best unit to be used on defense, but he can be decent because of Bolt Fighter. You could also use DC Vantage on him, and he can provide the lift reduction if you just do not care about uh, building up an Aether Raid's defense team, which I know a lot of people do not uh, really care about that because they are already in tier 21. Their goal is to just maintain tier 21 and not really do anything else. So Duma is kind of doomed because of this, because Duma is always going to be existing along with uh, Naga Season because Astra and Anima always go together. Uh, so people are going to be deploying their Nagas on their offense, and if people use Duma on defense, then it's going to be a free kill. I mean, the effective damage is going to be extremely powerful uh, for an ally, and uh, even Naga herself can just one-shot Duma, I believe. She does seem to be really powerful. So that's the poor thing about Duma. As Jedha once said in Echoes, Duma has been betrayed by his own kind. Uh, which is definitely unfortunate for him. If you want to use her as a super tank, I guess, uh, you would want to run this encounter. And this animation is absolutely beautiful from her attack. This kind of reminds me of Moonblast from Pokemon because it has that same uh, blue starry night effect. But maybe her dragon model could have been a bit more badass, I guess. Um, but I'm extremely satisfied with Naga as our Astrum mythic hero. So a really important unit to pull if you care about Aether Raids. Uh, I know some people are in tier 21, I do have a friend of mine who is already in tier 21, but he just cares about staying in tier 21, he doesn't really care about rankings a lot, he's just getting the consistent rewards and he's content with that. So if you're a person like that, then I guess you can skip on this, you don't really need the Astra Mythic Hero if you're already in tier 21, but uh, if you are uh, in tier 20 or below, uh, in the Astra Seasons, uh, Naga can definitely help you. Uh, get to tier 21 and in general for the people who do care about rankings pulling two copies of Naga is gonna be extremely extremely important for them um, so yeah if you care about ether rates then she's really important you know, to pull for and uh, people have been saving R for this expecting an astro mythic hero here so let's move on to the other units from this banner so we have got legendary Lin as the first uh, unit on this banner Legendary Lin is considered to be one of the worst Legendary heroes in the game because she isn't really all that defensive and she isn't really all that offensive. So she definitely misses the mark, if you know what I mean. So unfortunately, Legendary Lin isn't a very, very good unit in terms of combat, but uh, she does provide speed tactic and she's a win Legendary hero. So that can be useful in Aether Raids if you can side with a Light Season because you can use her with air to give her more resistance and she can turn out to be a pretty good uh, mage tank because she does have respectable resistance. Laws of Sakes can work in favor of you and you get more resistance from air. So she can be a good mage tank in Aether Raids. Green is a pretty good color for taking on Aphilias, Reinhardt, stuff like that. Um, and uh, she does have Sweet Tactic as a fodder which is not an easily available skill as of this moment. Uh, so that's that. And then we have got Brave Hector as the next unit. Brave Hector is the best Lance Armor unit in the game because of having a pretty min-max stat line. Maltet is really, really good. Ostian Counter is absolutely amazing. 
and uh, he can be a really good mixed face armor unit because of his weapon and bolt fighter. So you do have a sacred seal slot available because most of the armor units would need to run quicker post and bolt fighter to uh, be a mixed face unit, but not really him because of his weapon. The minus one cooldown of Malted is also extremely useful. So overall, a really really powerful unit for any content in the game basically. And uh, yeah, he's absolutely amazing. He has got Bullfighter as the fodder skill. And we've got another Bullfighter unit in the blue pool in uh, Legendary Tiki. So Legendary Tiki, once again, is a pretty good unit because she is a 180 BSC Dragon. She's useful in Arena even as a one-off copy because Legendary Heroes are in the rotation in Arena. So if she is in the rotation and if you do have her as a bonus unit, then it can be easy for you to stay into your 21 Arena or even reach your 21 Arena because she's a 180 BSC Dragon. So even a one-off copy can help you uh, in Arena and also in Arena Assault because she's got the Dragon Effective Weapon. She's got Fierce Breath and Bolt Fighter as a fodder. So another Bolt Fighter uh, fodder and also she's the only uh, unit who's got Fierce Breath. So does have value as a fodder and even as a unit, especially because she is a legendary hero. So we have got Legendary Erika as one of the best offensive cavaliers in the game because of Storm Siegland. With that weapon and Lunar Brace, you can essentially have Blacker Lunas, uh, which is extremely powerful. And uh, she can also function as a Gale Force Cavalier. Now you might ask, why would you take off Lunar Brace and run something like Gale Force? The reason for that is because Storm Siegland's uh, effect is really, really easy to trigger as a horse unit and you save Flashing Blade or Heavy Blade Seal and it can be used on some other unit and this is really really potent for Aether Raids for a Gale Force team. Um, so she is a really good Gale Force unit, she can be a really powerful offensive unit. She does have Attack Speed Solo which is a pretty powerful skill for Slotty, really good offensive skill. Uh, so overall a really really powerful unit. And another Sword Cavalier who's really good is Reed. Now Reed is more bulky than Erika so he can function in the enemy phase as a pretty good tank. And he can also function as an offensive unit in the player phase because of his weapon if you run Gale Force and Heavy Blade. So once again, he's a really reliable Gale Force unit because of his weapon. Not only his weapon stops the follow-up attacks of the enemies, but it also gives you a uh, follow-up attack if they have got any kind of status effect, which is really, really easy to do with someone like a Versa or with the structures in Aether Raids or just with ploy skills. And he himself has got Freezing Seal and Attack Smoke on his base kit. So our really versatile unit does bring a lot to the table and I absolutely love using him in Aether Raids as my Gale Force unit in the Astro Season and even now uh, the Light Season and the Wound Season are coinciding. Uh, so I do use him as my Gale Force unit. He also has a pretty good attack stat so I like to run Vantage on him on his slot B and have Gale Force and Heavy Blade. So he can finish up units and also act as a Vantage Sweeper, which I absolutely love using. So I do like Reed a lot. He has this encounter, which is one of the premium skills for slot A. So it does have value as a fodder and a pretty good combat unit. Then we move on to the green units. We have got New Year's Fearm with that 35-35 offensive spread, which is really, really good. She does have that green color, which means that in some matchups, she's going to be winning compared to some colorless units. But in general, the color does hold you back when it comes to nuking because you're going to be running into uh, weapon disadvantages. Uh, but regardless, Fearm has got a pretty good offensive stat spread and she does have amazing fodder. Kaburaya is a really, really good bow for cheerleading in something like Arena. Uh, if you've got Sea Duel Infantry on an Archer, because you could have Kaburaya, you could have a Chill skill, like Chill Defense on Slot B, and then you can have Chill Attack on your Sealed Slot, so they can be a fantastic support unit with triple Chill skills. She's got Attack Speed Link, which is a really good support skill on buff bots, and it can be useful on Smite User in Aether Raids, you can just run that. Attack Speed Bond is another skill which she has got on her base kit, but it's not really all that good. Still, it can be useful depending on what kind of builds you're running. So overall, a decent combat unit and does have good fodder. And then we have got her sister, newer Gantra. Gantra is a well-balanced red flyer with pretty good offenses, and we don't really have a lot of red flyers in the game. It's not really a very saturated class type, kind of like Lance Flyers. And uh, she's pretty good with that insane Hikami debuff range. And uh, overall a pretty good unit and she also has joint tone speed which is extremely useful for arena usage uh, for scoring. So if you've got someone like Sheena or Gwendolyn, a 300 SP slotty skill is definitely required to reach the max score with a dual rally skill so useful in that regard. And then we have got newer Levitane. So she has got one of the highest base attack in the game along with Picnic Jenny I believe and also Winter Erika. 
at base 36, but she is a Cavalier, so her mobility is absolutely fantastic, and uh, she also has workable defense, but unfortunately doesn't have a very high HP pool, so you could try a close counter build or something like that, but once again, the low HP pool is definitely going to be holding her back. Regardless, a pretty good healer. She's got Kamade Plus, which is a really good support staff, and Earthfire Bomb is uh, required for arena scoring for healers. As it is, healers don't really score all that well in arena, uh, even with colorless dual infantry, so, so you definitely require this kind of bomb plus skill. Wrathful Staff is also pretty useful as fodder. And then we have got uh, Duma. So Duma definitely took a big hit because of uh, Naga. So as it is, he had mediocre viability. I I wouldn't say he was extremely bad. I know a lot of people like to say that, but I don't really completely agree to that. Nor he was a very, very powerful, uh, oppressive unit. He was just kind of in the middle. And this mythic hero with her slotty skill is definitely going to be uh, reducing the viability of Duma a lot on AR defense, which is what he's made for because he's an anima hero. He does have a pretty high attack stat, so he could be used with DC Vantage, but that cannot be done on offense because you're going to be missing out on the lift points. So this was a big blow for Duma, unfortunately, along with his existing problems of having armor effective weakness, dragon effective weakness, uh, the one movement, the fact that upheaval can be offset by a free unit like Air, by Herons, uh, Leon and Raisin, and also by healing towers. So Duma already had a lot of problems and this just adds up to that. He does have Bolt Fighter, which is quite useful as a fodder. Defense Rest Solo, I wouldn't really say is the most useful skill. And then we have got Veluria as the colorless unit. So Veluria is a versatile unit. Because of her weapon, she can act as a support unit for units like Ares and for units who run Gale Force, which is absolutely amazing, even Special Spiral Lasers. And she's also able to reduce her own special cooldown, which is fantastic, and lets her act as a Gale Force unit herself, uh, which is extremely useful for Aether Raids where people would run these kinds of Gale Force teams. And she can also act as a tank. She does have respectable tanking ability with being colorless and also the fact that in the light season, uh, the Light Blessing can fix up her resistance and give her extra bulk. She can also run Null Counter Disrupt, which is absolutely amazing. So yeah, Valuria is a very versatile unit, can do a lot of things, can support, can act as a Gale Force unit, can act as a tank. It's just up to you how you want to use her. And uh, she does come with Ward Beast, which can be useful if you use Mufasa as your uh, super tank in Aether Raids, because even an unmerged Mufasa is going to be extremely, extremely powerful and tanky. So Ward Beast can definitely be helpful with that. Uh, setting up maybe a Soul or Noontime on your Mufasa, Valuria can do that. And if you want to fodder her off, then Ward Beast is really good on a uh, Beast Flyer like uh, Raisin or Leon. And uh, close defense isn't really available on any kind of easily available unit, other than maybe Joshua from Heroic Grails. Uh, so you could get that, but if you're saving up your Heroic Grails, uh, then yeah, close defense is also another option. Um, and finally, we have got Lu. After all of these gods, these uh, uh, protagonists like Lin and Hector, we finally have her boy Lu at the end. So Lu does have a pretty good offensive stat spread, and because of the extra BST, he does have better magical bulk than his mother, but unfortunately, because of his availability, he is really, really hurt because a lot of people have Nino at plus 10. She's a really popular unit for that. I myself have a plus 10 Nino on both of my accounts, so in the long run, Nino is just better, easily mergeable. Has a legendary weapon, which is a blade tome without any special cooldown penalty, and there are other green mages with uh, other niches like Levin and also Sonya with her dark Excalibur. So Lu not having any kind of preferred weapon definitely holds him back and his availability as well. He does have Drawn Serpent which can be used in Aether Raids for tanking and in general for building up uh, mage tanks. Rally Up Res is also extremely useful for rally traps in Aether Raids because it's an AoE rally skill and it's also really good for arena scoring. Fane skills in general don't really have a lot of usage other than being on a arena cheerleader where you're going to be running dual rally skills and stuff like that in arena. He definitely has unique skills for fodder uh, but unfortunately he does get a lot of competition from green mages even his own mother and his availability definitely hurts him as well. So those were all of the units on this banner and overall like blue and red color are the MVP of this banner. Green isn't really all that good. Green I would say is the worst one 
uh, in terms of value. Red and blue pool also have two legendary heroes which are really really good to get and uh, obviously blue is gonna be the highlight because of Naga and it's kind of funny how Naga is sharing the color with her daughter Tiki on this banner and uh, even the other blue unit on this banner which is Brave Hector is also a powerful unit and has got both fighter for fodder so blue and red colors are definitely the best colors on this banner followed by colorless and green is the worst one in my opinion so that's the review of this legendary banner it's not really the strongest or the most powerful legendary banner that we have got in a while we definitely have had some stronger ones compared to this uh, but still blue and red do provide you with that value so if you care about ether raids then yeah summon on this banner if you do not then you could save your orbs uh, maybe for the summer heroes maybe for the rerun of the summer heroes it's up to you so that's the review of this banner i hope you guys enjoyed if you did then please be sure to leave a like and uh, subscribe for more fire mom heroes content if you haven't already and be sure to hit that notification bell and click on all so that you can always get the updates to my videos whenever I upload. Because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Duma on AR defense with the release of Naga. So with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.